My name is uh, Dr. Devi Shetty and I'm a heart surgeon by profession. Question about young people developing heart disease. We have a serious problem in our hand. When I used to practice in England, most of my patients were old retired people. In India, most of the patients I treat are the young breadwinners of the family. It's not the uh, young son bringing his old father for a heart operation in my practice. It is the old father bringing his young son for a heart operation. What is the reason for this virtual epidemic of heart disease? The reason is we are genetically more vulnerable. We are three times more vulnerable than Caucasians in developing heart disease. And we have a very high incidence of diabetes. We are becoming the diabetic capital of the world. And diabetes leads to premature heart attack. And we have very high incidence of tobacco abuse and smoking. There is hardly any perceptible campaign against adverse effects of tobacco, smoking and in any other form. And our diet, Indian diet, is a recipe for disaster. We need to change our dietary habits in terms of uh, going away from very oil-rich fried stuff into something which is subtle and something which is more rich with proteins and uh, other stuff rather than oil. And Indians have virtually no intention to exercise. We are not very conscious about the benefits of exercise and uh, the, uh, the, 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 the greatest virtues of uh, exercise. So we need to change our habits. How many people walk in the morning or exercise? How many playgrounds you see across the country? There are hardly any. So essentially, we have a serious problem in hand. We have to address it. First is the lifestyle. It's very, very important that we take a heart healthy food, reduce the oil content in the diet, reduce fatty food, fried stuff, ghee, butter, cheese, milk and milk products. You can eat fish and chicken, no very little of red meat, very little of egg, preferably the white. Then smoking, tobacco. Smoking totally destroys the heart, so is the tobacco. So you have to reduce, stop the consumption of uh, tobacco in any form. Then exercise. You have to exercise, keep yourself fit. If you're a diabetic, control your blood sugar. Most young people don't bother about uh, controlling the blood sugar because they don't have any symptoms. Uncontrolled diabetes can damage virtually every organ. It's a silent killer. So control the diabetes. If the blood pressure is high, control the blood pressure. Then more than anything else, you have to change your perception towards life. It's very hard to create a perfect world. We have to accept it. We have to accept this world as it is, than as it should be. That is the best way to accept the uh, rules and regulations and the prevailing situation and buy peace within yourself. And my last advice for all of you is become spiritual. I'm not saying you should become religious. You should become spiritual. Believe in the existence of God who is going to take care of all of us. And the belief that somebody is there on top taking care of all of us and everything what we do can be a very soothing part of your life. First of all, we have to accept the fact that Indians are genetically three times more vulnerable for heart attack than Caucasians. 
being a Indian is a risk factor. Then we have to see how we can reduce the chances of developing heart attack. For that we need to change our diet. We have to reduce the oil content, fried stuff. We have to preferably become vegetarian fruit eaters. That is not possible, but lean meat is okay, fish and chicken is okay. Then we should develop the habit of exercising. Somehow it is not in our culture to exercise. The third and the most important thing is if you are a smoker, quit smoking. Tobacco in any form can damage your heart very badly. Then it is very important that if you are a diabetic, control your blood sugar. Monitor your blood sugar very regularly. If you are a hypertensive, control your blood pressure. And more than anything else, control, change your perception towards life. Do not try to create a perfect world and get stressed out. And lastly, all of us should become spiritual, not religious, spiritual. Solution for better health care in rural India is not telemedicine alone. It is changing our concept of medical education. We should liberate medical education and make it available to whoever wants to pursue. And the rigid regulation is the single reason why we have poor healthcare delivery in rural India. You do not need to train super specialists to do heart operation and angioplasties. All you need is a structured training program for young MBBS doctors for a six months or a year to take care of heart problems, diagnose the heart disease early and treat it properly. All it requires is a structured training program for six months or a year and that is not difficult to provide, but the current regulation does not allow. Over and above that, we need to build telemedicine program across the country. Telemedicine program can virtually bring a specialist doctor on your mobile phone wherever you are sitting and wherever the doctor is sitting. Today technology allows virtual consultation and majority of the healthcare problem can be treated with telemedicine. 99 percent of the time when a person is unwell, he does not require operation. He requires a consultation and a doctor to see his images and reports and interpret it. All this data can be transferred today to a mobile phone. Why should a patient sit in front of the doctor? So it is possible with telemedicine, but unfortunately it is not used to the extent it can be used. I left England 25 years ago. The first patient I operated in India paid 150,000 rupees for the heart surgery. Today that is 25 years later, we are doing the same heart operation for 120,000 rupees. I do not think any service or a product in this country, in this world is uh, procured or bought at half the procurement charges what was prevailing 25 years ago. This happened because of our incessant strive to make heart surgery affordable to the common man. We need to do 2 million heart surgeries a year in India. All the heart hospitals in the country put together perform less than 1,20,000 heart surgeries. What happens to the remaining 1.9 million people? They die gradually over a period of time. Are they old retired people? 
No, they are young breadwinners of the family. In the process, we perhaps produce one of the largest number of young widows in the world. How long we are going to accept it? It can't go on. We have to address it. If a solution is not affordable, it is not a solution. Cost of healthcare should become affordable. People should be covered by various low cost health insurances so that they can pay for the health care. And this has to be done. It has to be done today. And we believe the right policies in the country can make it happen. We don't need FDI. We don't need any of the big time investment by the government. We just want them to change the policies towards medical education and healthcare delivery. And believe me, we will become the first country in the world to dissociate healthcare from affluence. We can prove to the world that the wealth of the nation has nothing to do with the quality of healthcare its citizens can enjoy. Thank you very much for listening. My message to all of you is take care of your heart. You have only one heart and that should take care of you throughout your life so that you can really enjoy this world filled with wonderful creations from God. Have a great day and celebrate life. Good luck and God bless.